all right? It has been such a wonderful time that we've had and being here together and worshiping together. And you all have been so gracious to us. I mean, it's just been outstanding and wonderful, and I appreciate it. And I've been praying and asking, what in the world would the Lord have me to say uh, to you all tonight? And the Lord put a message on my heart. He was working on it uh, this week and kept putting it together. And, and you guys talked to me, and I listened, and I picked up on some things. And so I want to share with you tonight what I've picked up with, and I want to impart unto you tonight. So if you have your Bible, turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 17. And while you're turning there, before you do that, I want to uh, just simply uh, introduce to you all my wife, Karen. Uh, she was able to come with me tonight. Honey, just raise your hand. I won't ask you to stand because I have to go home and eat supper later or something, you know, uh, that direction. But anyway, uh, I'm really thrilled that she could be with us tonight and, and, and to be here. I appreciate that so much. But as we think about God, what he says to us in his word, please turn with me to 1 Kings chapter 17, and would you stand in honor of God's word as we look together at our text for tonight, all right? It's a very familiar passage, and I really enjoy uh, I, Elijah. I really do enjoy him, and I love the stories that is about him and what they say for you and I, because if there's ever a prophet of God that can speak to our heart and that can give to you and I the encouragement uh, that we need to, to be obedient to the Lord, I think you and I are able to see it here when we begin to look at what he has to say to us. So as we begin, looking there in beginning in verse 1, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was in the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to... To my word. Now I want you to hear how he said that. And then notice what happened. And then, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, Get thee hence, and turn thee eastward, and hide thyself by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed thee there. How would you like that? Birds bringing you dinner. I mean, yeah, I kind of thought about that a few times, but think about what he's saying there. But notice what he did. As he simply said, he said, So he went and did according un unto the word for the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith, that is before Jordan, and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. And it came to pass, after a while, the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. And then, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, again, we find the Lord intervening here in his life and speaking at a special time. He says, Arise, get thee to Zarephath, which belongeth to Zidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to fetch it, he called to her and said, Bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in thy hand. And she said, As the Lord thy God liveth, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel. I'm a little oil in a cruise, and behold, I am gathering two sticks, that I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat and die. And Elijah said unto her, Fear not. Let's just stop right there for a second. That word, fear not. We're approaching the Christmas season. And in the Christmas season, you hear that word used a whole lot, fear not. Do you realize that in the Word of God, there are fear nots 
is mentioned, or in that equivalent, is mentioned 365 days. Do you realize that's a, each day the whole year that God tells you and I, we don't have to be afraid? We don't need to be afraid. We just need to look in. But he says to her, in terms of, of looking, it says, Fear not, and go and do as thou hast said, but make me thereof a little cake first, and bring it unto me, and after make for thee and thy son. For thus the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, and neither shall the cruise uh, of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And he and she and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not, and neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. And then I want you to know the tragedy that then comes right here. And he says, And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick, and his sickness was sore, that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Are thou come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up to a loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord, and said, O Lord, my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come unto him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came unto him again, and he revived. And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chambers into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, See, thy son liveth. And the woman said to Elijah, Now by this I know that thou art the man of God, and that thy word of the Lord in thy mouth is true. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you again for the wonderful day you've given to us. It's been a, a beautiful day to be able to enjoy uh, the, the things that you have done and planned for us. We thank you, Father, for the opportunity to be here in your house, in your, your place of worship and praise of this evening. And we ask, Lord, that tonight as you speak to our heart, that you will draw every one of us closer to you and to each other, that your will above all would be accomplished and done in our hearts and in our lives. Thank you for these precious folks here. And I pray, Lord, that you will touch each one of us in that special way as we hear your call. May we respond in obedience. For this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, when you and I begin looking at this story, it is a great story. It is a story of encouragement for you and I today. It is a story that you and I can recognize how precious God's Word is and also just exactly how true that God's Word is for us tonight as we look at it. You'll notice in the reading that experience here of Elijah. You hear his story. He called, was called upon by God to go and to approach the king Ahab and to literally tell him about that terrible deed that he had done to Israel and that is bringing in the prophets of Baal. I mean, he had done a terrible thing and God told Elijah that Ahab was the wickedest king that had ever ruled the people of Israel and you go and tell him this. Now I want you to know what he was talking about. He said, you go rebuke him for it. Tell him that a plague was going to come across the land because of this deed. He didn't beat around the bush about it. He went right straight to Ahab. He told him and said, I am telling you that it's not going to rain upon this earth until I say so. And I want you to know that immediately they began and they went into a drought and it lasted three years. Three years that it did not rain 
in that countryside. Now, there are people that always comes up, oh, and they always like to ask that question. Well, why is it then that Elijah ran and hide? And it wasn't because that he was afraid of Ahab. That's not the reason at all. But the reason is so that Ahab couldn't get to him and offer a false repentance there and put pressure on him and to try to get him to bring the rain back. But now the Spirit of the Lord said, Listen, Elijah, I want you to do this. After he had done and approached the king and said that to him, the Spirit of the Lord spoke to him said, You go, and I want you to hide yourself by the brook Cherith. I want you to go right there, and I, and I want you to hide. And I have commanded the ravens that they will bring you food in the morning and food in the evening, and you can drink at the brook Cherith, and you'll have no problem. And so he, he raised him up and all of these things. But then we notice after a time period of about three years, the brook dried up. What was he going to do? Well, God spoke to him again. This is where he moved him to Zarephath, and he had a widow woman there ready that had a need, and Elijah had a need, and he brought them together to be able to accomplish. And when he said, bring me a drink and, 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 uh, and make me a cake first, she said, I can't. I've only got one portion of meal in a barrel, one portion of oil in a cruise, and my, I was going to build a fire and make a cake, and my son and I were going to eat it, and then we were going to starve to death. And then Elijah spoke what God had told him to and says, you make me one first, and then I want you to understand that as long as there's no rain, that that barrel of meal will never run out, nor will that cruise of oil ever run dry. And the woman did as she was commanded. And she would take it out and there would still be more. Can you imagine that? Taking a little bit out and there's still more. Taking a little more out and there's still more. And kept doing that right on up to that time. I mean, that is amazing. But then as everything was going just fine, here they were. They were comfortable. They were comfortable with what was going on in their life. They had food to eat and the water to drink. And then all of a sudden, the boy died. And we see that, and, and, and he grew sick, and he, he was sitting there, and it just happened. Suddenly the boy died, and the woman said, what, what are you doing to me? Are you bringing to remembrance my sin? And the Bible says that Elijah took the boy up to his own quarters, stretched across him three different times and praying unto the Lord, and the Lord heard his prayer, and he brought him back alive. Now tonight, I want to speak to you about few things here, four things. I want to talk to you about, number one, the brook. Number two, the barrel. Number three, the bottle. I hate to use that term, but that's basically what it is. And number four, the boy. So Elijah had done a very courageous thing. As he went to Ahab, as he shared what God had told him to do so, and he was faithful in doing that. And listen, friend, when you boil it down, here's the whole thing. God is in, interested and expects you and I to respond in obedience to His call upon our life all times of the day. I mean, not just on a Sunday morning. Well, I'm going to be obedient to the Lord on Sunday morning and Sunday evening, maybe even Wednesday night. But he expects you and I to be a believer and a Christian on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. He expects you and I to be faithful to Him all those different days as well in our life. He never expects, God never expects you and I to ever back down from our enemies and to stand strong on our, our convictions and our belief. I believe, as the young girl saying, I believe. God is moving and working. And Ahab had violated God's principle and, and went against what God would have him do. And he was disobedient. And as a result, uh, Elijah went and told him what God had said. And because, now when you think about that, that took a lot of courage. Because you know, in that day and time, whenever a person would approach a king 
and you would tell that king something that he didn't like, you know what he could do? Off with your head. He could kill you. But he went and he did that. And he gave Elijah his word, and he said, Elijah, I'll take care of you. You don't need to worry about any food, any drink, because I have the brook and the ravens will take care. Now that brook, when we look at it, it represents God's protection. Have you ever stopped to think about God's protection upon your life? Have you ever stopped to think about how much that God loves and God cares for you and how that God's looking after you in a lot of different areas? Now, I guarantee you that when Elijah came out of that valley, if he ever had any doubts, he didn't have them then because he was able to see firsthand how that God had taken care of him. I mean, br having birds to bring you breakfast and, and supper, that's pretty good, and having plenty of water to drink. I mean, he had it made, and that God would do everything, and he said, said he would accomplish everything that he was going to do in Elijah's life. And the same thing he says for you and I. He does the same for you and I. And folks, he was as convinced as any man could be. He found that place of refuge down by the brook. And God gave him the protection, just especially to him. And in our lives, how many times do we need that refuge of protection? How many different times do we need to literally run to that refuge for protection as God would speak and encourage you and I, as you and I face temptations every day, as you and I face problems and storms every day in our life, how that God would be able to move and to work. We need to be reminded about the protection there of Elijah and that whenever we take a strong stand, a strong defense, you can count on it. Be assured God is going to have a refreshing brook there for your need at that moment in time and and we have to understand that the old devil comes along and he accuses us and tells us that oh you're going to be isolated and and, and you're not going to have any friends and and guys that's what he's going to be telling you all if you take a stand for the lord jesus christ in the school you're not going to have any friends everybody's going to shun you and everybody's going to think you're silly because now i can tell you that because I know I was young. Believe it or not, guys, I was young at one time. I even went to school at one time, all right? And I even invited, I went the vocational school route, and I remember one time we were in revival, just like this, and I was on the school bus coming back uh, from the vocational school back to Fairview, and I invited, I just stood up, uh, and invited the whole bus uh, to come to revival, and when I did, I mean, uh, they laughed at me, they made fun of me, they did all those things, but I still invited them because that's what the Lord wanted me to do. And I knew that, and so I knew to, to, to do what He would have. And I'm telling you, when you obey God, and when you do what He says, God will bless, and God will strengthen you, and God will encourage you. And I mean, I want you to understand, God loves you, and God cares for you. And God is interested in you. And most importantly, as I've been saying all this week, God has got a plan for your life. He has got a plan for you. I mean, you have to realize He's not going to forsake you. He is going to be right there with you. And He will not say, well, you did a great job. You know, He's not going to say what for you all that was up here leading the music and singing the specials. He's not going to say, man, you did a great job and then just forget you. No! He's not going to do that. You have to understand God will always have a brook provided for you in order to meet your need and to restore your soul and encourage you to be refreshed in the Lord. But notice something else that God did. I want you to notice He did it in a way that, that is humanly that you just can't explain. I mean, honestly, I, I have serious doubt that God is in that which we can explain humanistically. I mean, if we can explain it, then I don't think God's in it, all right? 
I'm just telling you that. Had Elijah gone to a place that ran with milk and honey and all he had to do was gather up the meat, all he had to do was there hide from Ahab, you know what people would have said? And I'll tell you, people would have said it. Well, he had that place stashed out and, and had it full of everything that he needed. I mean, he had all the junk food he wanted. He didn't have to worry about a thing. No, he did have to worry. How am I going to be fed? How, how, how am I going to eat? How am I going to have water? Because, you know, water is an important thing. God says, I'll provide it. And God did. You see, there would have been a lot of people that would have had that strong suspicion that he had that stash away. But let me tell you, he knew that he was, was, had to get away from Ahab. He knew he had to do it. And God was working. And let me tell you something. I want you to realize, unless you and I are willing to surrender completely to the Lord, will never understand what it's like to experience the miracle power, supernatural power of Almighty in our God uh, in terms unless we're willing to surrender. And I'm going to say it again. I have serious doubt that God is in that which you and I would be able to explain humanistically there. And that goes on. You see, God knows exactly what we need. And all of these things, and you will never know what it's like as a child of God, to lay down by the brook chair, to be fed by the ravens of God, until you obey and do that which is seemingly ridiculous and illogical in your mind. But I want you to notice something else. I want you to notice the book dried up. Well, why? There was no rain. Elijah cut his water off. Did he not? He says, it's not going to rain until I say so. That's what he told the king. He cut his own water off. And he was not having a problem there. He stopped it. The very pronouncement that, a that Elijah made against Ahab affected him as well. And I know what you're saying. When you take a stand for God, I want you to hear me, and I want you to hear me very carefully, guys, especially you young folks and and for us that are senior young folks, uh, we need to hear that as well. When you take a stand for God, just get ready because it will eventually affect you as well. It will. So therefore, the, the thing of it is, the source ran dry because there was no water and, and all these things. But now here's the thing about it. We need to remember that God's source a supply when it runs dry because you are in God's place of protection down by the brook Cherith. And just because it runs dry in that rent, that doesn't mean God has deserted you. No, that's not what it means. You know what it means? It means this ministry, this part right here has ended and I've got another job for you to do. I've got another ministry for you to do. You see, there is a widow woman that is there at Zarephath that is about to die, her and her son. And I need you to go there and to demonstrate to her about how, how much that I love her, how much that I care for her, how much that I'm interested in that family, just like he is in each and every one of us. And I want you to go there. And so God told Elijah, you go to Zarephath. And when you arrive, you will find a woman there. And I've already talked to her. I've already done And when he got there, sure enough, there was that lady. There was that lady, and she, and, and, and you know the story and all that, but do you know what that, uh, when we talk about that barrel, you know what that barrel represents? That barrel represents God's provision. God's provision for you and for me. You see, the brook represented God's protection, the barrel represented God's provision. There is provision from God because he already saw the need of that woman and that son and also Elijah. And God knew just exactly where she was located. God knew exactly what was needed and he already had his prophet on his way to take care of her need. Here's the thing that I want you and I to get from that concept tonight. I want you and I to realize that that barrel is the reservoir of human ability. That barrel represents a reservoir of human ingenuity. That barrel of meal represents what we can 
do. What we can do. The Word of God said, just one more meal in it. Just one more meal is all that is in that barrel. But you know what? I have found over the years that God's best always comes from our least. Haven't you found that to be true? That God's best always comes from our least. Isn't that what we've been saying this week? Isn't that what we've been discovering as we've gone through the different messages that our, our little bit that we have and giving it to God and committing it to God, identifying it, committing it to Him, our littlest, in terms of that, God works His best when we demonstrate we have no strength, we have nothing. He has everything, and He has demonstrated. Now, I don't know what you got in your person or in your DNA, we could say, along that line. The only thing that matters is it, is it under the direction of the Lord Jesus Christ. Is it under His guidance? Is it under His direction? The only thing that matters is when you commit it to God is that it's got to be poured out. Please understand that. It's got to be poured. And here's what you'll discover. You're going to find that, the more, that it's more than enough when you pour it out completely that it's more than enough to take care of. You see, God not only wants us to see that He's protecting us, but He wants us to see also that He is providing for you. I mean, have you ever thought about the children of Israel as they left Egypt, as they were in the wilderness, and how that God provided for them manna? And what did He tell them to do? Go out in the morning and pick up the manna, the food off the ground, and pick it up. All that you need for that day. If you tried to get greedy, you know, I'm going to sneak me a few extra places back. It spoil. It spoiled. He provided one day at a time. And on the day before the Sabbath, you gather enough then for the two days, and it, not, it did not spoil. So God was providing. God was demonstrating and showing. That barrel will pour out just one portion, but it has to be poured out. And it's not going to be worth a dime unless it is poured out. It's not going to be. Every time she poured it out, there was one more. She poured it out the next day, and one more. And there was another day, and then one more, and just kept going on and on. And do you know what the principle is right there? The principle is everything you do in life, you ought to do as if you're pouring out the last thing that you will ever do as long as you live. Because the Bible tells us that whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Giving your all right then. Listen, those of you that are here at Garner Baptist Church, you, in terms, you are here by appointment of a sovereign God as we heard in the song a while ago. And not only that, but, but Garner Baptist has been here however many years that you have been here and, and, God, and you have been doing what it is that God has wanted you to do and you fit right into this community, right into the plan that God has for this area right here. You fit into that. And in your barrel there is something that fits into the recipe that God has for this community there. And the Lord will say to Garner or Baptist, you need to pour it out. You need to pour out your all of you in order so that we can reach that community for the Lord Jesus Christ. God is wanting us to pour it out. And He says, you pour it out and I'll fill it up the next day. He will. He will do that. You see, all these things, because someday, let me tell you, we're going to sing our last song. Someday we're going to say our last prayer. Someday we're going to win our last soul. And someday you're going to pour out your last portion in that barrel there. You see, everything that you and I do, we should do it as if it is our last day. Every service on Sunday morning, in the Sunday morning service, and the Sunday evening service, and the Wednesday, and all the other ministries that I saw that you all have, you need to do it as if this is going to be my last one. Because someday it will be. It will be. Give it your all. 
Give everything you got. And let the Lord work in. Then that brings us to the third one. And that is the bottle. Well, what was in the bottle? Just one portion of oil, it says. And the bottle represents God's power. Because if you remember in the scripture, whenever you use or hear the word oil, the, the, the Bible's talking about it, it always represents the Holy Spirit of God. Please understand that. It always represents the Holy Spirit of God. When Elijah went to the brook, he found the protection. When he fa- went to the barrel, he found God's provision. And when he went there to the, po- the bottle, he found God's power. But you see, the bottle just looked like it had only one portion in it because the Scripture says that's all that it was. That meal in that barrel wasn't worth a dime until that oil in that bottle got with that meal in the barrel and they made the cake. It wouldn't work any other direction. There, that's the only way that she could make. There was just enough oil in that bottle to get with what was in that barrel and to be able to make a cake. And I'm telling you that God plans to give you just enough power, enough for what you need to do for what He has called you to do. You see, that's the way God works. God is doing that. The power of God is laid out for you in that marvelous and wonderful way. The power of God is not just laid out for us to feel good and and, and to get a blessing, a spiritual high. The power of God is laid out on us to be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ. It is to be a witness for Him. The power of God mixes with whatever it is that you and I have, and that's where the power comes in. That's how God is able to take that little that we have and multiply it to meet the needs of the multitude. That's how God works. That's where He's demonstrating. Let me show you what I can do when you surrender to me. Let me show you how powerful that I am and that I'm looking after you. Let me demonstrate it for you. Because what He wants us to do, He wants you and I to learn the simple thing of obedience, of trusting Him of doing that. You see, that bottle represented God's power. We don't use Him. He uses us. And we do that. And it may seem like there's only one portion left. It may seem like that. But let me tell you, He says, use it. And don't you ask for another one till you use the one you got. Because that's important. And then we come to the last part of the story, and that is the boy. That's a tough one now. Why did the boy die? What in the world is the reasoning for that? Well, I don't know all the things about behind it in that way, but I wonder, could it be because everything that you and I deal with is death? Death would be all around us. You might say, well, what do you mean? Well, Every living thing, well, um, a matter of fact, when we're first born, we begin the process of dying. We do. And every year, them brain cells, them cells die out. And new ones are replaced, yes, but not as many as there was as that year before. And we have that process that's constantly going on. And I realize some maybe have already passed the age limit to where you really realize these things are happening. But I want you to understand something about Christ that we need to remember. Jesus came to overcome death. Is that not where we find our hope? Is that not where we find our strength? Is that not where you and I can, when we talk about that blessed hope that so many times we make reference to the Lord, we talk about that blessed hope that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ? And and, and I'm telling you, think about it. God's not going to protect us, give us the provision and the power except to make us understand where we fit into the natural scheme of things that He has laid out and that He has planned. That's exactly what happened in this family. I want you to think about it. Man, they had it made. They were experiencing a, 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 great, a great time, a great few months here. God was blessing richly. They had food on the table morning and night, and they had everything that they need, and things were going good. You could say, man, these are the good times. 
And they were excited about that. But then all of a sudden, the boy gets sick and dies. Well, here's the thing that I want to share with you that I feel like God would have me to say to you all tonight. And I want you to hear my heart and hear me very carefully. You guys have a tremendous reputation. You all have a love for the Lord. Heard that last night. Heard that last night. I mean, you talk about a blessing. What a blessing to hear you all brag about Jesus. And you know what? You didn't brag about yourself. You bragged about Jesus. You bragged about Him. You know that song that we sang? Never heard that song before either that we sang the first one there, that he, you know, for us to sing his praises and feel he fills our lungs so that we may praise him. Never heard that before, and I was thinking how wonderful that is. But as I thought about that and I was listening and I was thinking about all the wonderful things, your reputation, your love for the Lord, your love for one another, it was so evident. All these different things along this line. Things are going really good. We've had a good meeting. We've had a good series of meetings. And we can do something that is we have to be careful about. We can get comfortable. You hear me? We can get comfortable. Well, we're we're doing good. The, The numbers are picking up and and, and, and we're, we're increasing in Sunday school, and, and we're seeing people saved, and we're seeing these things there, and, and, and we get comfortable, and we forget about what it is that God has called us to do. You see, the way the church grows, now there will always be a little inward growth, but that's not the way that the church really grows. The way the church really grows is by the outward. It's by going out. It is by taking the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world. You see, we get comfortable. We get, oh, well, we're doing really well. I mean, we're we're all excited about that and all those things there and all of that. But just like that boy died under their noses there of Elijah, if we're not careful, if we're not listening to the voice of the Holy Spirit, we will get so preoccupied to make sure that there's one more portion in the barrel, there's one more portion in the bottle, there is that protection by the brook, that we will miss what it is that God has intended for us. You see, right under our nose, things will die that can never be resurrected. And you say, what do you mean? Well, I hope you never let your zeal and enthusiasm for the Lord Jesus Christ die. I hope that you will never let your love for lost sinners die. I hope that you will never ever let your love for one another die. I hope that that sweet, forgiving spirit that you all have in your hearts and demonstrate from time to time, I hope it, ha- it never dies. I hope that because we had better not allow any kind of spiritual death to come to the church. God doesn't want that. God has a plan and a program for Garner Baptist Church. And guess what? You're in it. You're a part of it. And you are to be involved. Listen, right in the midst of the barrel, right in the midst of the brook, right in the midst of the bottle there, and right under our noses, things can die that, that we didn't even think of. And when that happens, here's what you got to do. And I'll just make it as plain and simple as I possibly can. What we need to do if that happens with us, with our love, our zeal, our enthusiasm, our uh, love for lost people and, 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 and all this, is to come and to stretch ourselves out at this altar and cry unto the Lord to help us come back to our first love that we talked about Sunday morning. Coming back 
and loving Him with our heart and our mind and our soul and our strength and our hope. That's so important. So uh, that's what we have to see when that boy dies, when that zeal, enthusiasm, and love, and gentleness, and graciousness, and tenderness, and forgiveness, and, and excitement, all those fruits, when that dies, we're in a heap of trouble. We're in a heap of trouble. And what we need to pray is simply, Lord, forgive me of my neglect. Lord, forgive me of my apathy. Forgive me in that direction and help me to return to my first love that I have for the Lord Jesus. That's what we need. That's what we need. I've tried my best. I've thought of different things and I want to be an encourager to you tonight. I want to be an encourager. You all are great folks. Wonderful folks. Please, stay on top of your game. Stay focused. Keep your eyes upon Jesus. Follow Him. Listen to that still small voice of the Holy Spirit of God as He speaks to you about what you as a church body can do to reach this community. This community is lost. It needs Christ. And the only way that these folk will ever hear about Jesus is for the membership of Garner Baptist Church to take the gospel to them and to share it with them. You know, in, in Acts, when we look there in, in the book of Acts, chapter 8, there just for a moment, and we begin to... Uh, Notice a, a passage of Scripture that, that speaks to our hearts there in a, in a very special way. And, and when we look, we hear about Philip preaching a revival and having great results. And then we find that Philip heard God speak to him. And God spoke to him in a special way. And he told him to get up and to go towards God. And, you know, he didn't argue. He didn't debate. He didn't do any of this. He just went and built be Why in the world would you want to leave a, a place where the people were responding and people were being saved and, and responding to the gospel and go to a desert where there's nobody? Where there's nobody. But I want you to realize that he heard the voice of the Lord and he went. And as he was going, he saw a chariot coming. And there on that chariot, there was an Ethiopian eunuch who had charge of all of the treasures there of that country, and he'd come back from Jerusalem, and he was reading in the chariot the prophet Isaiah. And the Spirit said, Philip, go join. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And you know what he said? He said, How can I except someone would guide me. And so he desired Philip to come up. Do you know? Now I know you'll find this hard to believe because we like to put on a front. We're tough. We're, we're not interested in things. But yet we sure do pay attention, don't we? You know, this community is saying, man, I'm reading the Bible. I'm seeing a lot of things here. But I don't understand what I'm reading. I need somebody to guide me. Would you be that somebody tonight? Would you be that somebody that would guide that lost person to Jesus so they would understand the importance of that blessed hope that you talk about time and time again as we pray. Father, we thank you again for your love. Oh, how tremendous is your love. You are just so awesome. Lord, we stand amazed at how you move and work all the time. We see how your hand guides and directs us. Lord, in times that we didn't even realize it. But you have always demonstrated and shown yourself to be faithful. To be faithful to our every need that we have. Help us to realize that. And help us to respond with thanksgiving in our hearts. 
But Lord, I also pray that tonight, as we think of the importance of, of surrendering all completely to, to the Lord Jesus, but Lord, I, 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 I need to mention this. If there's one here that doesn't know Christ as their Savior and Lord, and they're just like that Ethiopian eunuch and saying, I'm reading, but I'm just not understanding. How can I unless somebody would show me the way? Oh, I pray that you would let folks here open the Word of God and share with you about Jesus and what you need to do to be saved and to be born into the kingdom of God. I pray that if there's one here that doesn't know Jesus, may this be the time that you'll come and receive Christ as Savior and Lord. And maybe there are believers here that have just gone somewhat cold. And this is a time they need to rededicate and fall back in love with their first love with you. Give them the courage to step out. And maybe there are those that are here that uh, from a sister church that like faith and order that need to move their ladder here. This is where you want them to serve. This is where you want them to come and to be a part of your work in building your kingdom. Give them the courage to step out and to unite with this body of believers here to do the work that you've called us to do. So have your way, and we'll be sure to give you the glory and the honor and the praise. For it's in Jesus' name we ask. Amen.